Today I have a large format printer. It's an Epson Stylus Photo 7900. And I'm going to do a complete teardown and show you what's inside. And I'm also going to show you what I plan to do with all the parts I salvage from this printer. So let's get started. This thing weighs a ton. It's extremely heavy. And you can see how big it is. That's my water bottle. And you can see how big it is relative to the water bottle. All right, so I've got the covers out. Got a gigantic motor. This motor moves the entire print head assembly. It's huge. It's three times bigger than my drill motor. On the other side, we got a small motor here and a couple more motors on the back here. All right, so here it is with everything disassembled. It took me two days to completely tear down this printer. There are a lot of small parts and screws. One of the parts that is time consuming is the ink spill and cleanup. I already removed all the ink cartridges prior to the tear down. But because this printer is so big, there's still a large amount of ink remaining in the tubes and the reserve tank. As a result, I spilled quite a large amount of ink on the ground. Fortunately, this ink is water soluble, so hopefully the rain will come and wash this away before my wife sees this. I've got two very long ink tubes, about 10 feet long each. These are very good quality silicone tubing and they don't kink. I'm able to wash away all the ink so I can use this for other projects. There are many other shorter silicone tubes throughout the printer. All of these tubes are silicone and not plastic, so this is a good find here. I can use this silicone tubing for a lot of things. If you are a scrapper looking for recycling materials like aluminum or copper, I have bad news for you. There are no aluminum or copper in this printer. Well, of course, there are some aluminum and copper in the forms of electrical wires and in the circuit boards, but not enough for you to sell at a scrapyard for anything. There are a lot of metal panels on this printer. All of these panels are metal, and by metal, I mean iron, FE. None of them is aluminum. These things are heavy. The total weight of all of these panels is probably about 200 pounds. But because they're iron, they are of little value if you want to sell them at a scrapyard. If you're into electronic parts and hardware, you're in for a treat. There are a total of 10 DC motors in which one of them is large enough to run an electric scooter. There are also two 24 volt DC fans. These fans are centrifugal fans and that means they are more powerful and more efficient than regular axial fans. I'll show you how they work later in the video. There is an electric pump which is run by a DC motor. This is a very bizarre pump in which the motor spins around a rod, which in turn moves a piece of plastic around. There are four silicone nipples on the plastic piece and as it moves around, it would either pull or push the silicone nipples and that creates a suction which helps move the liquid. There are not a lot of electrical cables on this printer. Most of the cables are in these flat ribbon forms, so I guess uh, it would be useful for projects in which uh, you don't have a lot of room to squeeze the wires in, this will come in handy. So over here I've got three very long rods. These are round stainless steel rods. Very well built and sturdy. And I also got a hexagonal rod. It's about 36 inches long, about 3 feet long. I've got also other smaller stainless steel rods and also a lot of springs. So the big question is what am I going to do with all these parts? Well, there's a lot of things I can do with all these parts actually. It depends on how wild your imagination goes. But let me show you a very few practical things you can do with these parts here. So the first thing we've got are the metal panels. These panels have little scraps value, but because the metal is thin, you can easily cut and shape them for other projects. I've got a lot of ink cartridges. These cartridges have liquid ink in it, so you can basically remove the ink inside here and refill for other printers. This water pump can be used for a fish tank or you can make a water fountain for your garden. You got these small motors and 
these are great for using for RC toys like RC cars or boats or whatever it's got gears on it too so it's pretty good ready to go this motor here is the biggest motor on the printer it's for moving the print head back and forth while it prints and it's the size is about the same size as the I would say the Razer E200 electric motor so I can probably use this for an electric uh, scooter you got the motor connected to the 36 volt controller and uh, thumb throttle 40 volt cobalt battery and let's try to see if it works go ahead there you go. Variable speed too. It's very nice. So the motor is very quiet. Let me hold the motor. Very quiet motor. Pretty cool. Alright, so we're gonna try on this uh, razor regular razor scooter. Go. There we go. Very nice. Go maximum. That's very nice. That cool. Pretty cool. So basically, this is very simple. All I gotta do is mount the motor right at the end here and then run the belt through here and I can spin this wheel. So I've got this hexagonal shape, long rod here, it's about three feet long and I'm thinking I can probably use this for making a plastic shredder where you use this hexagonal shape rod as the axle and then you insert the cutting blade inside when it spins to allow the blade to cut the uh, plastic. This part here is the cutting wheel it's got a cutting wheel on the bottom and a smaller cutting wheel on the top and they spin so that when they slide back and forth they will cut the printer paper so over here I got a fairly thick piece of paper and then just use this and uh, make a slider or something so I can slide it back and forth and just cut my piece of paper just like that this is a waste ink tank it's watertight so I can use it to store water or and use it to store small parts and here is the housing for the uh, waste ink tank so it would fit in here just like that and I can probably use this as a mouse trap what do you think I've got a lot of silicone tubing and because they're made of silicone they are heat resistant and they don't kink so my plan is to use them for my alcohol stove so I'm gonna make a, a remote alcohol tank for my alcohol stove so this silicone tubing will feed alcohol from the tank to the stove that way I don't have to refill my stove uh, too often and the only tubing that is good for this project is silicone tubing and not plastic because these are heat resistant so they don't melt in the heat and last but not least this is my favorite find these are the 224 volt DC fans these are centrifugal fans and they are quite powerful my plan is to make a homemade 24 volt leaf blower using the cobalt 24 volt battery and some PVC pipes and voila I'm gonna turn this into this So let me show you how this works. I'm going to connect the fan to my cobalt 24 volt battery here. Extremely powerful. Very, very powerful. We've got my amp meter here and let's try and see how much power the fan will run. So 1.8 amp at 24 volts, that's almost 50 watts for both fans. So each fan is about 25 watts. So that's quite powerful. 
And of course, it doesn't end here. There are so many parts here that the amount of uses you can have is only limited by your imagination. Hopefully, in my next projects, I'll be able to show you the stuff I would make out of these parts, especially the two 24 volt fans, because I'm pretty excited and confident that I could make a decent 24 volt cordless leaf blower out of it. Until then, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.